What we have with us is a D1VW, directional control valve. This particular model has AC coils and AC tubes along with DIN connectors. So the first thing you want to do is just simply remove the coil retaining nut from the tube assembly. That will allow you to slide off the coil assembly. Now there is an outer, large outer O-ring and also a smaller inner O-ring. And then you would remove the tube assembly. Inside the tube assembly we have a spring, and a plunger rod, and just set that to the side. And then it's going to be the same thing for the other side. We're going to take and remove the coil retaining nut. Slide off the coil. Remove the outer O-ring. And again, the torque is broken on this tube assembly. So we're going to remove it. Oop. So we have the spring. We have a plunger rod and the tube assembly. Now inside, that what's left is the washers for the spool on both sides. So lay those out. And then, of course, we have the spool. The spool we want to check and make sure is free of movement. Do not want to use any excessive force to get the spool out of the body so we don't damage any of the lands. Once the spool is removed from the body, you do want to take note of the direction of the arrow on the spool itself because we want that arrow in the same orientation on A port to B port uh, when we put it back together. We want to point out a couple things on the valve's nameplate, the Parker nameplate. Top line is the Parker part number, so this is a D1VW series. On the far right side of the top line, there's going to be a two-digit number, and that is going to indicate the design series of this valve. In this case, we have a 91 series valve, so when you call a distributor asking for service items, make sure you know that design series because it will have, they will need to know that to be able to help you out with a spare parts. So putting the valve back together, you know, first thing we want to do is look at the body itself, make sure it's not damaged, especially on the ceiling surface area. Uh, we have all the O-rings installed. There's no big gouges in it that would prevent it from sealing once it's torqued. This looks fine. Uh, the valve housing is in good shape. Next thing we want to do is look at the spool, make sure there's no burrs from contamination, uh, anything that would prohibit the spool from moving freely inside the bore. So this is just a good visual review. Make sure there's no shiny spots which would indicate a damaged area. And as we indicated earlier, there is an arrow on the spool and we want to make sure that that arrow, the orientation of it, is exactly the same as when the spool came out of the body. That is important. So when installing the spool, use light pressure we don't want to force the spool in. Guide it into the spool bore until it goes into the center. And then just take your fingers and very lightly push back and forth, making sure you have good freedom of movement. What we want to do next is look at the tube assembly and make sure it's in good shape. The flats on these are for a half inch wrench. The torque on these are 180 inch pounds. We don't want to distort these flats because if we displace the metal, it can have an impact on the manual push pin, which could cause it to lodge and have a, a performance impact on the valve later by not allowing the spool to fully shift. At some point, you actually have leakage out of this manual push pin. You will have to get a new tube assembly. So what we want to do is put the push rod back into the tube assembly and the spring. We're going to do that on both of these. And then holding the spool in place with one hand 
take your spool washer, get it on the spool, and just flip and do the other side. And we can set that back down. And then with everything, making sure everything is nestled in the tube assembly correctly, go ahead and install the tube assembly back into the body. And then we are going to torque it to 180 inch pounds. And then we're going to install the inner O-ring, which is going to go up against the body. And then for the coil, a couple things that we want to look at, any chips in the plastic, cracks in the plastic housing would be of concern. We get questions on what would cause these to fail. Incorrect voltage, whether too high, too low, can cause a failure of the coil. Uh, too high of a flow in a valve can actually cause these to fail. And then lastly, uh, these valves are industrial valves, so they're not meant to be out into the elements. So if these are exposed to water or any type of heavy moisture, uh, it can cause uh, these coils to fail. And then also on the connectors, making sure they're not bent, damaged, uh, or even just uh, dirty, uh, making sure that we have those clean and serviceable to have a good electrical connection. So with the inner O-ring installed, We'll slide the coil onto the tube assembly, take the large outer O-ring, and slide it up into the coil cavity, and then install the coil retaining nut. And we're going to get that good and snug by hand. And then it's the same thing on the other side of the valve. We're going to take the tube assembly, making sure our push rod and spring are still there, our washer is sitting up against the spool. Run it in by hand, and again, torquing this very carefully, not to damage the end of the tube, 180 inch pounds. Install the inner O-ring up against the body. And again, taking the coil assembly, sliding it over the tube, install the outer O-ring into the coil recess, and then installing the coil retaining nut. And again, just good firm hand tight on the coil retaining nut. We have a complete valve. Uh, when looking at the valve assembly, as you will note, one of the DIN connectors is gray, the other one is black. The reason for the gray, one gray, one black, is to help you identify which side is A port, which side is B port. Uh, the gray side will always be the A port side, and black will be on the B. If you order a valve without the connectors, your valve will come with some shipping protectors over the connections on the coil. And these are just strictly to help protect the coil connections from not being damaged during shipment. In this case, these are DIN connectors. Tighten the screws down, and you're ready to mount the valve. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helps assist you when servicing directional valves. Down below, you will find links for our directional valve catalog and our distributor locator. Please take a moment to leave your feedback on this video and what you would like to see us do in the future. Also. Make sure you like and subscribe to ensure you are notified when we release future videos.